I want to read from St. John 14, verses 15 and 17. Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him, it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And also, um, we're reading from New King James Version, St. John 16, verses 5 to 12. Jesus says, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. We know of the discourse. We know of Jesus' walking. We know of his calling his disciples. We know of his journeys through the miracles. We know of his pains and struggles that he suffered, right? He suffered pain. The Bible says when Lazarus died, Jesus was troubled and he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And the word that is used there refers to uh, a, a pain as if when, you, you, when somebody's really lost, when somebody dies, that pain that you feel when somebody dies, Jesus felt that pain. The cross was not the only pain he felt. Amen. The Bible talks about Jesus being hungry and he, the Bible talks about the, the, the struggles that he went through when he went through the temptations and he went through many different things with people trying to um, trick him and trying to you know, do all these things. He went through all of these pains and these struggles, right? And every moment, what happened was that when he had his disciples, he called his disciples and they were with him, the Bible says. So he was their comforter. He was, while he was with them, their encourager. He was their enabler. Yeah, he was there as the son of God, as the Son of Man, as God in flesh, just like Peter and James and John, these men who knew him. There came a time when he said, it is enough. I really cannot continue with you like this. And truth be told, um, there are some places in Scripture that I kind of like King James regular King James Version a little bit differently than New King James Version. Regular King James Version says, it is expedient for you that I go away. Alright? That's what Jesus says. It is necessary that I go away. Now think about this. This man Jesus, who has worked all of these miracles that obviously they had a great friendship with, now he's saying, boy, I have to leave. Imagine what happened in their hearts when Jesus said, I have, I have to leave. So, we see Jesus saying, he must go away. But then he said, I am not going to leave you alone. He says, I am going to send you another person like me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says he's going to send somebody who is going to comfort you. Now, there are many things that have been said about the Holy Spirit. Some people say that he is an it. I want to encourage you, by the word of God, 
When you speak about the Holy Spirit, you declare him for who he is. He is the third person in the Godhead. He is the Spirit of God. Amen? He is not a force. He is not an it. He is a person. From the beginning of creation, we saw where the Holy Spirit has been at work. In Genesis 1-2, the scripture says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. This is the Holy Spirit at work from the very beginning. And there have been a number of times in scripture where we see the Holy Spirit at work in so many things. The Holy Spirit does so many things. The Holy Spirit was present at creation. The Holy Spirit was present during the flood. The Holy Spirit was present for healing. The Holy Spirit was present on Samson and Moses. We saw where the Holy Spirit came and gifts were given to the men to build the tabernacle and so on and so forth. We, saw, we have seen right throughout scripture where the Holy Spirit has been at work. Yes. Amen? There is something that is a little bit different with how the Holy Spirit operated in the Old Testament and how he operates in the New Testament. And this is a very, very potent point that is, is necessary for us to understand, for us to appreciate, for us to embrace according to the revelation of the Word of God. In the Old Testament, we saw where you know, it, it is kind of, um, a young lady at work asked me this week about the Holy Spirit. And uh, we were talking and she said, um, you know, I know that the Holy Spirit will not always strive with man. And I said, yes, the scripture said that in the Old Testament. Today, the Holy Spirit does not leave the believer. Amen. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given to some people to accomplish a particular task at a particular time. And when that task was completed, the Holy Spirit was taken back. We saw it happen with Samson, his strength left him because he put his hand into what God said, don't put your hand in. We've seen it where the Holy Spirit left Saul. Yeah? We've seen where the Holy Spirit have left prophets. We saw the Holy Spirit left Balaam. Yeah. Come on. It's there. Now, Jesus said a most potent statement concerning John the Baptist. He said, of all the men born to women, there is none greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit at birth. All right. Then Jesus said this, now the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. In St. John 14, 16, the word for another comes from the Greek word alos. And it points to another of the same kind. So the Holy Spirit even though is a different person from Jesus Christ, is that a different substance from Jesus Christ. In other words, the Holy Spirit is God. Amen? Jesus Christ is God. God the Father is God. And we're not talking about three gods. We're talking about one God that operates 
within, within three persons. It's not three manifestations. Is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word that refers to that referred to the Holy Spirit when Jesus said, I will send him to you is a word paracletos. Paracletos, a paracletos is someone who comes alongside, an advocate, a comforter, somebody who enables. And the word is only used of persons. It's not used of it's. Amen. Amen. So who is the Holy Spirit? He's the third person in the, Godhead, in the Godhead. He's equal with God the Father and he's equal with the Lord Jesus Christ. Here are a couple of scriptures. Write them down quickly. He receives worship that is due to the Father and the Son. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. He does divine work, including the inspiration of Scripture. 2 Peter 1.20 He regenerates hearts. Titus 3.5 He creates, sustains, and gives life. Genesis 1.2 He is eternal. Hebrews 9.14 He is omniscient. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 10 and 11. In the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 He is called God. As Peter said to Ananias and Sapphira Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied to man but you have lied to God. Amen? The Holy Spirit makes choices. He chooses. When Paul went back to Jerusalem and they were praying in church there, the Holy Spirit said, Paul and Silas, Paul and Barnabas, these two, I'm going to send you on the missionary journey. So he speaks. There's no it that speaks. I know nowadays we have the AI business and the cars that have some little things, but the, the, the it's that speak now are not speaking of their own accord. <laughs> they have some, they, they don't have life as the Bible describes life, the Zoe of God. Amen? The Holy Spirit teaches. John 14, 16. The Holy Spirit guides. John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus Christ. John 16, 14. The Holy Spirit convicts. John 16, 8. The Holy Spirit seals. 2 Corinthians 1, 22 and 20, 21 and 22. The Holy Spirit is always involved with the people of God and he brought revelation. He's always bringing revelation. He's always teaching. He's always revealing things that we would not otherwise have known. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, There are a number of things that transact in your life that you may not even be aware of. When someone says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I repent of my sins and I receive him as my Savior. According to the scripture, your spirit man is born again. When that spirit man is born again, you are born into the kingdom of God. Now the Holy Spirit comes and he lives in your spirit. Are you, are you, you with me? 
The Holy Spirit connects your spirit with God. And he communicates with you through your spirit. Your spirit, man, has three functions. Worship. Communion. That is where we commune with God. And what is called perception. This is where the Holy Spirit brings things to your spirit that you don't know, you don't always know from learning. Amen. So even though you might not be aware that that functionality is present in your being, there are times that the Holy Spirit will be prompting you to do something. Are there times that you try to do something and there's something that says, don't do it. There's something that says, oh, but there's a voice that says, don't go there. There's a voice that speaks into your spirit. That voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit that guides you, protects you, delivers you, keeps you back from things that would otherwise cause you to get into trouble with God. That voice of the Holy Spirit that says, don't take that taxi. Don't go down that journey, down that road. So he brings these revelations and he brings these things to us so that we can walk aright. So we can live. Now, in some, in, in, in some, how best to say this? The world will tell you that you can get better by education. And education is a good thing. It's not a bad thing in and of itself. But the man who is not educated still has the capacity to live a life that is a good life outside of education because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scripture was given by the Holy Spirit. It was not a mechanical dictation. And if you can just bear with me a little bit. There's this big old word in scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. That Paul said to Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for instruction, for correction, for righteousness, so that we can live right. All right. So the word that I want to share with you is the word inspiration. The word inspiration is a word that comes directly from the heart of God. And it means God breathed. Okay. God breathed. So God breathed the word and holy men of God, the Bible says, wrote as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the word that you read in scripture is not some white man write it or some church people choose it. The word that you read in scripture is the very Word of God. Okay. Can you put up First Peter, Second Peter 1 verse 20. Can you put up really quickly? When God gave the word, even though there are places in scripture that God says, write this down, most of the scripture was not given by a mechanical dictation where God said, write something, and these robotic people just write some things. Are you, are you with me? The Bible was written over 
1,400 years by 40 or so different authors. People in Asia, people in Africa, people all over, all over those lands that wrote, they did not even know each other, but what they wrote was aligned. Are you, with, are you with me? Because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere all at once. Amen? All right. Can you put up the scripture at 2 Peter 1.20? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. So, let, 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 let me share something with you. Every author that wrote, God did not take out that author's personality and say, I'm going to put my personality in you and you write. God was able to intertwine his carrying along by the Holy Spirit and what these men were writing and their personalities were remaining, remained intact. So when I read Peter's writing, Peter's writing was not as refined as Paul's writing or as Luke's writing. Or when I read Mark, Mark's writing was not as refined because these men were not as learned or educated as Luke or as Paul. Are you, are you, are you here? What this means, uh, let, me, let, me, let me say what I have written down here. It was not a mechanical dictation or a mindset or a conceptual inspiration. Nowadays we have artists, singers, and so on and so forth that say them have inspiration. That's how they write and poet. This kind of inspiration that the Bible talks about is an inspiration that the Holy Spirit from the heart of God brought his message, intertwined it, without removing the personalities. So when the personalities wrote, they wrote according to how they can write, but what they wrote was the word of God. Yeah. I hope I'm not troubling you too much, you know. The reason why this is important, it is a divine human concurrence, meaning that God intertwine himself in the human agent to carry out that which he wants to carry out. God was able to do that through the agency of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 1 Corinthians 2 sorry, verse 12 and 13. This is what the apostle wrote. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that we have been freely given, that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual what is the importance of this? The Holy Spirit has intertwined himself in us. And having intertwined himself in us, his agency is carrying us to do the work and the assignments that he wants to do in the world. Ah, the, the Holy Spirit assigns our talents and our giftings and assigns our education and he assigns the places that we end up in. And sometimes we might think it's by accident and sometimes we want to escape because we can't take the boss and we can't take the neighbor and we can't take the husband and we can't take the children and we can't take the this and we can't take the that. But the Holy Spirit is guiding us because he's intertwined in us 
because there's a work, there's an assignment that he has for us to carry out. There's an assignment in this house. There's an assignment in Montego Bay. There's an assignment in Jamaica. There's an assignment in the schools if you're a teacher. There's an assignment at the radio station. There's an assignment in the business places. God is not expecting us to. All right. We're going to call so-and-so for come and help. God has an agent. God has a secret agent in the business place. God has a secret agent. And a secret agent is empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they take you up and they, you know, you might get in a little bit of trouble. Sometimes, let me tell you something. Sometimes you feel bad when you don't get the promotion, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I get bad. May feel bad when I get the promotion. Not a real thing, but I go and like said or so. It's a real thing. But sometimes when I get the promotion, it's to silence you. Sometimes when you get the promotion, you can no longer represent God. Sometimes when you get the promotion, it's to keep you quiet. So you have to consult with the Holy Spirit concerning whether you should take the promotion. As sometimes there are things that you might have to compromise and when you compromise things you step back from the assignment that God has given you you had better be careful of what you're stepping back from because there's an agency <laughs> sometimes they promote you to set you up they promoted Daniel to set him up they promoted Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego to set them up. And so when they knew that these men would not bow to the things that they promoted, you know, because they were, they were hoping that they would come against the God in these men. But these men said, we are not, well, all right, promote us. But when you promote us, know that we are still going to stand with God. The Bible said, when the decree was given, Daniel went to his house and he opened his windows toward Jerusalem as his custom was. Oh, Lord. The agency of the Holy Spirit. God does nothing in the earth outside of the agency of us. Lord, he, he, he cannot because God is spirit and spirits are illegal on the earth. Man has been given dominion on the earth. So when God came through Jesus Christ, Jesus had to be a man. And Jesus had to die. And Jesus as a man had to ascend. Because Jesus in the flesh is not omnipresent. But the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. So wherever the child of God is, wherever the Spirit of God is, no matter what is happening, the Holy Spirit is in Montego Bay. The Holy Spirit is in Kingston. The Holy Spirit is in, in Ocho Rios. No matter where you are, as a child of God, you carry the agency of the Holy Spirit. We have to learn to consult with him. We have to learn to 
ask the Holy Spirit questions. Jesus said to his disciples, listen, there's going to come a time when you are going to be taken before the courts. There's going to come a time when you're going to be persecuted. This is what Jesus said. And sometimes we read the scriptures and sometimes we might not be paying enough attention to the scriptures. Because sometimes God has not given us an assignment to live in everything nice and dandy. God has given us an assignment to carry out, to clean up. So, when, we, when you come against the plans of the enemy, just know that the enemy is going to come back. It, it, is, it is a natural outcome of a war. It's a natural outcome. The enemy is not going to roll over and die. He's going to push back. So when you stand to fight, you have to make sure that you're standing to fight. You're armored by the word of God and by the things of God. Do the things that the Lord says. Is that, is, is that simple? So Jesus said, when you are brought before the authorities, don't settle it in your heart what you're going to say. Because sometimes you settle it in your heart where you go, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say and so on and so forth. No, but, but it's a real thing. But Jesus said, for it is in that moment. Now, what that means is, the Holy Spirit is very present. The Holy Spirit is very there. So, when you are in trouble, you consult with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what do I say here? Sometimes the Holy Spirit says, don't say nothing on. Don't say nothing. Just usher a praise. Just utter a praise. Just lift up a hallelujah. Just Sometimes it just says, be silent. Do you know who he is? He is the Holy Spirit. He is God in the Spirit for you. For me. He is. There are times that I heard a testimony that the, the, the angels were seen, yeah, and the whirlwind, and she testified that the, she saw the medications go up and the so on and so on go up and, and, and that kind of thing. That's a, that's a phenomenal revelation. And then she saw you no know, medicine come back down, she, and the, the heart come back down, and the brain come back down. How you think she said that? The Holy Spirit. The scripture says this. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us. With what? Groanings that sometimes we do not have the words to express. All we can say, oh God. Mm. And the Holy Spirit knows to take that to God. Sometimes we do not have the energy. Sometimes we do not have the words. Sometimes we do not have the wherewithal. We can only curl up like a baby. And Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit! <laughs> Hallelujah! Mm. The Holy Spirit imparted wisdom, practical skills, strength, and ability for building the tabernacle. You ever read the Bible? And seeing in the scriptures where the Holy Spirit gave these gifts to these men. God said to Moses, you see the one in Be Bezalel? I have given him wisdom to build jewelry. Yeah? I have given this one wisdom to build curtain. You think, say, you think, say, 
Be, because you can sew a little bit. Uh, you, you think it's just you're learning to that? <laughs> Come on, no. Because you can do a little thing, you know. It, it, listen, there's, I'm not discounting learning, you know. Learning is great. But it is God who gives the ability to learn. It is God who gives the gifting. Amen. So I'm not, I'm not pouring cold water on it. I'm just saying that the Holy Spirit, all things that we have is given by the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that we come here with. There's nothing that we come here with. So we have to be careful of how we steward what we have. We have to be careful how we represent what we have. There's a certain gentleman in the scripture that he heard a couple of things from God. He saw how God moved when he threw men in the fire. And so he knew that there was this great God and he decided anyway to come out in his marvelous palace one day and declare is not this great Babylon that I myself have built with my own hands God did not send a prophet God did not send, a, uh, send nobody to him God himself spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar he said King Nebuchadnezzar I have taken the kingdom from you and you are going to go out in the forest you who are eat grass like an ox until you learn that God rules and reigns in the kingdom of men. You ever read it in scripture? Yeah, you ever read it in scripture? A, a little bit of diversion, please. Bear with me. There's a young lady, well, she probably not so young now, but she was a prodigy. From she had 12 years old, she can sing like angel. Yeah, man. Celine Dion. Yeah. She can sing like, she can sing. And I don't know nobody who don't like Celine Dion songs. A few years ago, she started to dabble in some things. And all of a sudden, we hear about one disease that is rarest of the rarest of the rarest of the rarest disease. And she can't sing no more. Don't play with God. Do, do we know? I'm, I'm not judging, you know, people, people of God. I, 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 I can declare to you by the word of God that God will silence a voice. That God will remove a hand that can craft. That God will move a general who is the best at what he does. When they come up against him. Yeah. We must learn to yeah. humble ourselves yeah. before God. Yeah. But how does the Holy Spirit work with us? Can you put up Ephesians 5, 18 to 21 please? How does the Holy Spirit work with us? This is the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. He says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. King James says excess, right? But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. We've heard the phrase, be filled with the Spirit, right? What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? 
What does it mean to be baptized in the Spirit? I'm just going to drop two points here. In the baptism of the Spirit, the word baptism comes from the word baptizo. It's a Greek word that means to immerse. So when we baptize you in water, we immerse you, cover you under the water. When we become believers, when we receive Jesus Christ, we are baptized in his body. Meaning, we are immersed in his body. Amen? In the body of Christ. That's what baptism means. Baptism in, in the spirit is a one-time event. When you become a Christian, you are baptized in the body. It's a one-time event. Okay? To be filled with the Spirit, we get filled with the Spirit when we give ourselves to the Lord. Yeah? When we surrender ourselves to the Lord. The word that is used in Ephesians there that speaks about being filled, be filled with the Spirit, the word that is used means keep on being filled. That makes sense, right? It's a continual process. So today you can be a little bit empty because you're not pursuing God in prayer, in worship, in the word, in right living. Yeah. Okay? So it's a continual process and it means that we do not fill ourselves but we allow the spirit of God to fill us. So we don't speak out a turn or something that the Lord didn't say or we don't say something from the word of God that he did not say. It's important. We have been given the capacity to manage our spirit. Bible says, as a matter of fact, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. That means that you can control your faculties. Yeah. You can control your faculty. You can control your decision. You can control how you operate. Even as a believer. The filling of the Spirit brings power in the life of the believer. Power to live holy. Power to witness. Power to accomplish everything that God has called you to accomplish. The filling of the Spirit should be a continual endeavor and a continual experience. Meaning, we should always be pursuing God to be filled with the Spirit. We should always be pursuing God to do what He wants us to do. So, don't, don't, don't just come to church, born again. Don't wait until Sunday to hear the word. Don't wait until Tuesday night to pray. You should have a word life. You should have a prayer life. You should have a life of activity in the ministry to walk in the spirit, to do what God has called you to do. If we do not continually seek him, if we do not seek to be filled, we don't have any fruit for the kingdom. How many times have you spoken to someone about God and it feels empty and the person is not convicted or the person just kiss him to eat and then behave any which way around you? Yeah. Because you have to carry an authority and that authority comes from a pursuing of God. A seeking of the things of God. Amen. Believers are filled by yielding. I'm going to give you four points here. One. Believers are filled by yielding to the Spirit's control. So we must yield to His will in our lives. By obeying scripture. And listening to His promptings. Believers are filled by yielding to the Spirit's control. And we find this in Romans 12 verse 1. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
Point number two. Believers are filled by dwelling in the word of God. The believer must love truth. <laughs> the believer, the word dwelling here is not talking about visiting the word, you know. It's dwelling in the word. That means you pick up the word, you read the word, you meditate on the word, you process the word, you regurgitate the word, you walk the word, you think the word, you talk the word, you live the word, you order your life according to the word. That is what to dwell means. I live over book. I'm not going to tell my address, but I live over book. That's my dwelling place. I have the key to every door. I have the I have everything for the house. <laughs> are you are you with me? It's my dwelling place. That is where I live. We have to live in the word. We have to live by the word. That's what dwelling means. He that visit the secret place of the most high. That's that's not what it says. What it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Not just visiting, but dwelling. Amen. So this is what Paul says in Colossians 3, 16, 17. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him Amen. the holy spirit fills us when we do that point number three believers are filled through prayer. How many of us come Tuesday night? Oh? La, 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 la. So we're going to invite you, the entire house, to Tuesday nights. Come on out to prayer Tuesday nights. Maybe you're a little bit struggling with your prayer life. Come learn to pray. Maybe you're a little bit struggling with the word. Come listen to the word. Maybe you're a little bit struggling with fellowship. Come on fellowship. Now, this is Acts 4, 29 to 31. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Stretching out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, listen this. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with Boldness. Amen. Believers are filled through worship. That's the fourth point. You know, sometimes we come to church and we don't want to lift up a hand. We sit down in the presence of God and so on and so forth. When we worship God, let me tell you a little story. Is it okay? The Bible talks about a famine in the land and the Bible talks about the three or four lepers that were out in the wilderness. And the leper says, boy, we are dead for hungry. God knows how to move people. God knows how to move things. They said, we are dying of hunger. And there's a whole heap of soldier over there so with food. We are going to make work over there go get some food. Sometimes you always have a naysayer in the group and they say, boy, if we go over there, they're going to kill me. 
They say, but what if we're dead when we go over there? If we stay here, we're going to die. And if we go over there where food is, we are going to die. So let us go where the food is and we die. While this was happening, the word of God came to a prophet. And the word of God came to the king. And the word of God says, by this time tomorrow, you will have food that you will not be able to contain. Now the treasurer, the bean counter, the man who does not have no faith in God says, even if God would have opened the window of heaven, that cannot happen. The word of God went out to him and said, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not have any of it. Lord of mercy. The Bible says, here comes these lepers walking through the desert. I send them walking in, walking through wilderness. I go towards the soldiers of them. Lord of mercy, the Bible says that the soldiers heard hundreds of thousands of chariots and horses. The Bible says, for God had caused them to hear. Lord of mercy. Do you know what happens in your life when the Holy Spirit says, move from here, take this journey, take a step, go in this direction. <laughs> the Bible says, when the lepers went over there, there was not one soldier because the soldiers heard the sound and they fled. Do you know when the Holy Spirit says, just take the journey? Do you know what the Lord does in the Spirit? When the Holy Spirit says, march around Jericho. Seven times, march around Jericho. Don't bother make no sound day one, day two, day three. Just march around. Just listen to what the Holy Spirit says. What happens when the Holy Spirit says, put the lantern in the basket? <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Believers are filled through worship. Oh, boy. How does that work? What are the results? Of being filled with the Spirit. We come to church and we can't even preach because the presence of the Lord just filled the place. The Bible says when the temple was dedicated, the priests could not minister because the presence of the Lord came and filled the house. When we are filled, corporate worship ascends to another level. The psalmist says, Psalm 95, verse 1 to 3. Psalmist says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is great and the great king above all gods. Hallelujah. What is the result of being filled? Individual worship. Our own individual worship lives change. Get to another level. And sometimes the Bible says that Paul and Silas were thrown in the inner prison. And the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 26, Acts, Acts chapter 16, the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas began to praise and they began to worship. Let me tell you something. When we are filled, we don't need the, the nothing, anything to worship. <laughs> when, we, when we are filled in a way, no matter the situation, the inner prison, let me tell you about the inner prison. 
the inner prison was almost like solitary. It was in the heart of the prison system. They had like three or four layers before they could get out. So these men praise and they worship God. The Bible says the doors were flung open because there was an earthquake and the jailer who was supposed to be watching drop asleep because the Bible says he woke up from his sleep and when he saw that the doors were open, he drew his sword to take his own life. You see, when we understand the Roman, the Roman system of government and their laws and how they are concerning executing their laws, that um, jailer would have been killed if them prisoners had escaped. But Paul, through the Holy Spirit, says, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. And he came trembling. The Bible says, the jailer who just whipped Paul and Silas, who just beat them till they, he came trembling. How many times have the Lord delivered you from some things and some bad neighbor and some people who have you up and God didn't ask you to pray for them because there is something in their lives that no matter what it is that they may have brought you through, they know that there's a God in you. They know that your God is a God to be worshipped. They know, and so they come trembling. <laughs> they knelt down and they said, man, what? What do you, what can we do? Bible said, Paul, pray for them. Pray for your enemy, oh. <laughs> Lord of mercy, pray for your enemy. Bless them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Paul just pray for them. The Bible says the jailer put a little, little healing thing upon the sword the man thing, and the whole of them house gets saved. Sometimes the Holy Spirit throw you in the inner prison for a purpose. I heard somebody say this morning that trauma has a purpose. Have mercy. Individual worship. Results of being filled. We walk in thankfulness. In everything the Bible says, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 the result of being filled, submission. Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind that each esteem others better than himself. Let me just wrap this up. The Lord is always with us. He's always working through the agency of the Holy Spirit in us. But we can become more aware of his presence. There are times when the Holy Spirit will do something that we didn't ask. And there are times that he will do things that we ask. There are times that he will gather. He will bring about changes and transitions and healings when we don't ask. And there are times that he will when we do ask. The longer you walk with the Lord, the sweeter that relationship gets. <laughs> You'll be able to see how God moves in our lives. When we something just, by Holy Spirit, just praise yourself. And your atmosphere just shifts. The real thing. And he is our helper. Our comforter. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. The word of God says he is with us and he will always be with us. That's what the word of God says. It's not me or so, you know. It's what the word of God says. Jesus says, when the comforter is come, he will be with you and he shall be in you. Um, can you put up my, um, St. John 16, verse 33 for me, please? 
With the Holy Spirit as your guide, you can be coached through any situation, no matter how difficult or how challenging. This is Jesus speaking. These things have I spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But what Jesus said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, so there, there's a verse that popped in my mind here just now. It's popping my spirit. It's in 1 John. I think it's 1 John 5. 1 John 3, 5 or somewhere there. I don't remember. But it says, And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. In other words, when we believe God, we already overcome the world. When we believe God, we are already victorious. And the Holy Spirit is one who empowers that victory. We must learn to build our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Can we stand? We must learn to connect with Him. We must ask Him questions. Holy Spirit, do I take this journey? Should I buy this? Should I marry this person? Huh? Holy Spirit, is this the best decision? Yeah. Or, Holy Spirit, what decision should I make? The Holy Spirit will bring the truth of God from the scriptures. He will tell you the truth about your health. He will tell you the truth about your marriage. He will tell you the truth about your singleness. He will tell you the truth about things that you might be going through or, or, or things that might be set up against you. He will guide you. He said in the word, you will hear a voice behind you. Saying, this is the path. Walk therein. Listen to his voice. He will tell you the truth about your interactions with people. <laughs> he will tell you the truth about your relationship with money. <laughs> Lord of mercy. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He comes alongside us to take us through those little moments or those journeys or those struggles. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior, called for corporate worship when he was confronted by the cross. He said to his disciples, come and pray with me. He said, my heart, is ex my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Come and pray with me. So when we announce corporate prayer, corporate worship, corporate praise, gathering, come. There's a filling, there's an anointing, there's a gracing, there's, there's deliverance, there's strengthening. This is God's way of building us up. It is not possible to build yourself up. It is not possible. Come into the house. Come into the presence of God. Declare the word of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go down to the house of God. The Holy Spirit. It may be that we have 
not recognized or we have walked away from or we have lightly esteemed the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to encourage us if you feel that you have stepped away from that place with the Holy Spirit, let us come to repentance today. Let us rebuild our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let us reconnect with Him in repentance as He is here. And so many times He wants to reconnect with us. So many times our ears and our hearts and our spirits are so hard against Him as we might there's something that he might want us to do that we don't want to do. There's repentance here. Jesus Christ died so that he could come. Jesus Christ died so that your life can be different. Jesus Christ died that you may have relationship with God. Jesus Christ died that you can be adopted into the family of God. Jesus Christ died so you can have relationship with the Holy Spirit that your purpose in life can be fulfilled. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Come to the altar. The place of deliverance and a place of restoration, a place of healing, a place of strengthening. A place of covering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.